Uh, we have a special guest on the Around the League podcast this week. Greg's very excited about it. He was talking about it downstairs. He is a former Pro Bowler. He is a former Super Bowl champion. He's the guard for the Green Bay Packers. Josh Sitton, welcome to the Around the League podcast. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? We're, we're doing well. What's going on? Uh, nothing much. Just got got home from work. Just hanging out, man. <laughs> Couch time. That is funny. <laughs> it's funny. Like that's what a normal person would say. You get home from work and you go lay on the couch. Josh Shitton just happens to be a famous football player. That's pretty awesome. Josh, I have a question. <laughs> so it's twenty six three at halftime. Aaron Rodgers said yesterday on on his radio show he does in Wisconsin that he, the locker room it felt like there wasn't a comeback in your bones. Um, obviously, his feeling was wrong. Did you feel? At any time that this was just not your day? Yeah, man, to be honest with you, I was, you know, when we got down, um, you know, even, you know, midway in the second quarter, I was like, oh, good Lord, here, here goes a Detroit game again, you know, getting <laughs> getting blown out on, on national TV. You know, I, I was um, pretty down about it. And, you know, what Aaron said, I mean, the locker room didn't necessarily feel like, um, that we had a comeback in us, and but but we did, and and uh, we we definitely needed it. Is is there a point in that game where you started to feel like this is going to happen, like Jordy Nelson's catch, maybe, or just something that gets you thinking that we can actually do this? Yeah, well, we talked about it. Um, you know, talked about it at halftime with a couple of the guys. Like, you know, we just kept saying, let's just go one play at a time. Let's just go make one play. And see where that can take us. And you know, this is a, a momentum sport. You know, everybody knows that. Um, and so you, you know, you make that one play, make that one first down. Uh, you know, you quiet the crowd and get a little momentum going. Uh, and we knew we just had to take that approach. We we weren't gonna uh, go score 30 points. You know, in five minutes. So we just had to take it one play at a time. Uh, and I think, I think the Eddie Lacy, you know, the 60-yard run. Uh, was the, was that play for us? I think that was you know what got our confidence back. And then obviously when Jordy scored, um, you know we just had a little momentum and, and had the confidence that we could go score. How important has it been to have Lacey there? Obviously you've been there a while, and the, the Packers struggled for so long to to get a big time running back. It looks like you guys hit on one, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, he's uh, he's been a hell of a back for us this year, man. He. Uh, he always falls forward, and he always turns a two-yard run into a three- or four-yard run, and, and that's what you ask uh, from your running back. You know, you're not always going to get 10, 15, 20-yard runs. I mean, that, those don't come very often, uh, you know, maybe once a game. But, uh, you, you know, you just want a back that's going to fall forward and get the extra hard yards. And, I mean, I, I think he's, you know, should be in the running for – for offensive rookie of the year, I mean he's he's had that type of year and have has had that type of impact on our offense. Mike McCarthy said after that Cowboys game, he had to stop himself from crying. Uh, have you ever seen Mike McCarthy cry? And what was the what was the plane ride and the emotion like after coming back from that game? Um, let's see. Yes, I have seen him cry. Mm, to um, what? To doing what? Did you make him cry? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to tell the story because I, I don't want to embarrass him, you know. Um, no, uh, just kidding. Now, I'm probably pretty sure everybody shed some tears after the uh, after the Super Bowl. Um, I'll, you know, I'll say personally, I was uh, doing everything to to hold back tears after that game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, you know, it was an emotional win for us. It was a huge win, uh, not only the way we did it, but where our season is. So. Uh, it was a uh, it was a big one for us, and it was, I mean, it was <laughs> it was the best celebration I've seen in a locker room and a, and a plane ride um, in a regular season game since I've been playing. Well, what does that entail, actually? Because I I just don't I'm trying to I've never been on one of those planes. No surprise. Oh really, uh, Greg? I, yeah. So what does that mean, the best celebration? Well, in the locker room, I mean, we just everybody's screaming and hugging and dancing, and you know, the, on Packers dot com they. They put it up, um, but Donnie Barclay was the captain, and he's from Pittsburgh, and he, him and Coach McCarthy have very similar accents, and before the game, Donnie was like, you know, y'all won the game, won the Super Bowl here, and, and you know, made it your house, and let's do it today, let's make this our house, and he says, our hoss, that's how they do it, our hoss. <laughs> 
So, you know, after the game, I started the chant, oh, Hoss, oh, Hoss, oh, Hoss. <laughs> and that's uh, the video they got on Packers.com, everybody dancing and, and screaming, oh, Hoss. So, so it's, it's kind of funny to, uh, you know, jab it at, at Mike and, and Donnie a little bit, though. But it was, uh, it was just a blast, man. Everybody seems to have fun at Jero World except for the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I'm 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 two and zero there, so I'll I'll take it. I like it. <laughs> um, so Aaron Rodgers. First of all, is it true that any Packer that speaks out about his uh, medical situation gets cast out of Wisconsin forever? <laughs> um, I, I don't know about that, but <laughs> what it, definitely aren't really supposed to talk about anybody else's injuries. I mean, that's kind of a a rule anyway just in general you don't you don't talk about other guys injuries i mean you let them talk about their body and i mean even if, even if uh, we knew something you know nobody would obviously say anything have you sensed his frustration because it seems like he's so close but then the tests come back and it, it slows slows him down again i'm sure as a competitor and you, you know him very well i mean it has to be very tough for him right yeah absolutely and i, I mean definitely see the frustration um you know, let's see, two weeks ago, I was, you know, kind of getting after him a little bit. Hey, when are you going to be back? When Not getting after him, just asking him, you know, a lot, you know, constantly. When, when are you going to be back? You know, what's your deal? What's your status? Blah, blah, blah. And finally, one time he was like, look, man, relax, chill. <laughs> I want to be out there. I freaking want to be out there battling with you guys. You know, just <laughs> leave it alone. I was like, oh, my bad. You know, so he, he's he's definitely frustrated. He wants to be out there with us. Um, you know, every every guy in this league is uh, ultra competitive. So, uh, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to be out on the field. And, and I think the biggest thing is uh, the feeling of you know letting your teammates down. That's that's what I uh, he, that's what I think. And you know, from personally, you know, being injured before and blah blah blah, you you, you just don't want to let your teammates down. So, I think that's the biggest thing. And he's definitely frustrated. And and uh, you know, we definitely can't wait to get him back. I know you're focused on the upcoming opponent, the Pittsburgh Steelers, but did you get a chance to watch the Detroit Scumbags play on Monday night? <laughs> um, I don't know if I caught that game. What happened? <laughs> so, is that something where you're at home watching like a, a fan? Wait, like I, the will, Lions? I just to fill Josh Absolutely, in. Absolutely, dude. We were watching yeah. and, and screaming. We were <laughs> cussing the coaches because they – Ran the ball in third and ten, and we were like, "Oh my God, it's such a long field goal!" And then we were jumping and screaming, and then, yeah, we were very happy. Needless to say, yeah, John Harbaugh is really on a roll of several years now to set up a sixty-yard field goal and then come out as a genius. That that must have been pretty exciting. Yeah, it was it was definitely fun to watch. Great game to watch, and obviously, you know, at, at this point in the season, you know, obviously you focus on yourself and your games, but. At this point in the season, especially our situation where you need help, you, you know you can't help but watch the other games, and it was definitely an uh, uh, exciting moment. Uh, before we let you go, Josh, I just want to touch on one thing that you, you said earlier this week. Uh, you seem remarkably prepared, and Mark and I on this podcast have discussed this topic before, surviving a, a zombie uh, apocalypse. And you had some good information here. Uh, zombies definitely don't like cold weather, and you already have to have a plan in place. People you trust that you have to be around. Then you have to have lots of weapons, and you try to fortify yourself in a big place with a big old fence. Then you just rock on and kill lots of zombies. That's honestly how I hope I go out someday in a zombie, zombie apocalypse. Josh, you, this is the book. You've written the story on how to defend yourself against the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's funny. Everyone that I've talked to this week, you know, uh, media has has asked me about that. I, it's actually started a couple of years ago. We talked about. Um, I brought up the question: if there was a zombie apocalypse, who would be your number one draft pick from hmm. the our locker room to to be able to survive with? And my my number one draft pick was was Tom Crabtree. Um, one, you know, great athlete, strong. No, he can knows he can survive. I know he can survive. Um, but two, he looks like a zombie, so you know, he'll <laughs> blend in, and they won't come after us. So that's how this came up, and then it, and then it led to this past week. I had a battle with uh, Greg Van Roten about who would last longer, and and I, I think I would personally, but he, <laughs> he didn't agree with me. You've got the beard. You can. Store food in there, spit, anything really goes in the beard nicely. I mean, I got 
probably 100 peanuts in my beard right now. So I'm good to go for at least a week. Josh Sitton will live forever. Josh, thank you very much for joining us, and good luck against the Steelers this week. All right, guys. Appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Josh.